You ever wonder why your videos aren't as loud as everybody else's videos on YouTube? You're editing your audio right, you're setting your levels good, but you're still not as loud as everybody else. I'm gonna solve that problem for you today, and it's probably because you're not checking your overall loudness or luffs level at the end of your audio editing process. I'm gonna try not to get too into the weeds with stuff, just kind of an easy way, show you how to do it, to get your audio sounding good and just as loud as it should be right here on YouTube. So I'm in Resolve and I have a project that I recently completed here. Now, when you're trying to make sure that your audio levels meet the standards that we need for things like YouTube, Netflix, wherever you might be uploading them, it's important to go through and set all of your levels where they should be right off the bat. Now, I've got a whole video on setting your audio levels, so if you don't know how to do that, you don't know where they should be set, check out that video. I'll link it up over here. You can check that out. Do that first. What we're doing now is checking our loudness, and this is the very last step of the process here. It's kind of part of the mastering of your audio here for whatever project that you might be working on. So with this project right here, I'm already edited. I'm going to jump over into Fairlight because that's where we're going to be able to measure our loudness. Now, loudness stands for loudness units full scale. And an important thing to keep in mind here is that it's not a measure of one particular channel. It's everything as a whole. And it's important to keep that in mind because we're measuring everything as a whole. We're not measuring individual things to meet a certain loudness level. So that's important to keep in mind. So in Fairlight here, you want to make sure you've got your meters open at the top. If you don't see the meters, you're going to click on that. Now, right up here is our loudness section, and we want to be measuring for YouTube in this case. You can also choose other options, but if you don't see YouTube right here, click on the three dots and come down to YouTube. And you can see all the other standards here that you can measure to. Now, I like to keep this absolute scale turned on, and I'll show you what that means in a second. But in this case, we're going with YouTube, so that's what we've got our LUFs set up for. Now, in order to measure the LUFs, we need to play through our video, right? There's no quick way to kind of just get a, a reading or a measurement because it's the measurement of the loudness over time. So it's got to play through your video to kind of measure those loudness levels. So I'm going to bring my playhead back to the beginning of my timeline here. And if we look down at the bottom here, I have bus one open and it, we can see it in my timeline here. Now, if you don't see bus one, you need to come up here and turn on this icon right here. And that's gonna allow us to see bus one with this little graph down in our timeline. So I'm gonna hold shift in my middle mouse wheel just to zoom vertical a little bit. And if I come down to where the bus one is, if my bus one is too small, we might not see some of the tools that we might wanna use. So you gotta make sure that you grab the little handle here, drag your bus one bigger. It's gonna make the graph a little bit bigger for you, but right here, loudness history, this is where we wanna make sure that this is turned on. Now, usually, I'm only gonna look at the integrated level because the momentary is quick little spikes in the short term is exactly what it says, it's short term audio. So I kinda of wanna know the integrated level because that's what YouTube and other platforms are looking for when it comes to the overall loudness of your video. So to get started here, I wanna come up to my loudness section and I'm gonna hit reset and start. So now when I start to play back my video, we are gonna see this graph plot a line on there and that's gonna tell us where our loudness levels currently are. Now, because in these three dots here, I left this absolute scale checked on, when we look in our graph down here, we see minus 14 and that is the allowable limit by YouTube, minus 14 LUFs. So that's why we see a minus 14 there. If, for example, I didn't have the absolute scale checked, then we see zero and zero represents minus 14 LUFs. So that gets a little confusing for me. I just like to see the absolute scale. I wanna know what actual LUFs level that I'm going for here. So I'm just gonna mute this so I can play it back and we can watch what's gonna happen here without uh, you know the audio clogging up our, our stuff here. So we can see this line getting plotted and this is measuring the overall LUFs level or the loudness level. LUFs stands for loudness units full scale. So that's plotting a line. Now minus 14 here is as loud as we can go for YouTube. If we go over that, YouTube is gonna compress it down on us and we don't want YouTube making changes to our audio. We wanna make those changes ourselves. So we can see here, this is working out pretty good. And if I zoom in horizontally, we can just see a little bit better where it's falling. It's kind of coming down a little mi below minus 14. If I zoom in a little bit more, we can see we're between minus 14 and minus 10, or I'm sorry, minus 20 and minus 14. Now we can also look up here in our loudness graph and we can see our different ranges, right? Our short-term range, our short-term max, our range right here, as well as integrated. So this integrated wants to be close to, but not going over, minus 14 LUFs. So if you notice that you're a little low, like in this case, I'm a little bit low here, 
we can come over to our main bus one and the easiest way to increase our loudness a little bit is just to boost up our fader on our main bus one. And we can see it's gonna start to rise up here a little bit. You're gonna let it play through and you want it to get close to, but not exceed that minus 14 luffs. And that's gonna make it sound louder on YouTube probably similar to the way you hear other videos and you're wondering why yours aren't as loud. This is exactly why your videos don't come across as loud on YouTube. So you can just let this go and it's going to continue to take that measurement over time. We can see the integrated is changing up here. It's now minus 16.4 luffs and it's going to still creep up a little bit and eventually level off over time. Now you can throw a limiter or something on your main bus one if you wanted to, just to make sure that you're not gonna peak or go over the minus 14 luffs there. But I actually like to use two other plugin tools that I get from Waves and I just wanna show you what they are. And they work good for me. I use them on pretty much every single video that I make. So instead of having to boost up my main bus one, I'm gonna go ahead and double click my fader and reset that. I'm gonna come back to the beginning of my video put my playhead at the beginning of the timeline. Now these two plugins right here are from Waves and I like to use them as part of my mastering process. So if I open them up here, I have the L1 limiter. It's a stereo limiter. And essentially I can just set my output ceiling, which I usually do to minus one dB. And then I can adjust my threshold. And by dragging this down, it's gonna make my audio louder and boost everything up. So how I use this is I play through my video, I watch my luffs level here, and I make this a little bit louder so it gets closer to that minus 14 luffs. So I'm gonna throw on my headphones here so that we can all give it a listen together. And let's play through the video and I'm gonna show you how adjusting the threshold here is gonna bring everything up a little bit as a whole. And before I hit play through here, I'm just gonna reset and start my loudness meter again so that it'll reset and recalculate my loudness. I'm gonna turn on my effect here and we're gonna play through and I'll show you how the threshold will change the volume of my audio, everything together as a whole. My name is Jason Nedlovsky and I am gonna show you how to create that cool little spooky sequence here in DaVinci Resolve. We're gonna use a little fusion, little color page, little edit page, it's now, one thing to keep in mind, as we kind of played with this a little bit, you notice that it did go up over the line, right? We have a yellow graph line here, which says, hey, we're getting a little close to going over and we're measuring the integrated level. So an average over time. So the fact that it goes over a little bit in the beginning, that's okay. If we continue to play through our clip here or our, our video, and then we came back to the beginning and we did it again, we're gonna notice that line's gonna be in a slightly different spot because it's averaging together the total amount of luffs over time. So check this out. My name is Jason Nedlovsky and I am gonna show you how to- So you can see now it's kind of leveling out a little bit, right? And if we look up in our loudness graph up here, our integrated is now minus 14.8. So that's perfect. We're below that 14 and we're not going to get squashed down there by YouTube. So I really like this stereo limiter plugin from Waves because it just does a really good job. It's easy to use. It's like two sliders here, piece of cake. And then the other thing that I like to use from Waves is a meter. So if I open up this guy, this is a WLM plus stereo. So this is essentially another meter, right? Another way to measure my loudness levels. And if I turn it on here, what I can do is select a whole bunch of different types of uh, levels and metering and all that kind of stuff. So I select the YouTube one. I hit reset right here. And then I'm gonna play through and this is gonna give me similar or the same readings really as I'm getting up here. So let's just play through that. If I just mute this so we can play through it, but we can see our momentary, our true peak right here. And this is where it's gonna limit it at these little triangles here. And we can also turn on and off the true peak limiter to say, hey, we want it to be limited or we don't. Now we can boost our overall or reduce our overall gain with this right here. You can see here, that's too much. We're going up over in our long term. That's not good. If we bring it down a little bit, eventually it would come back down to minus 14. But if we reset it, you can see this is gonna give you your luffs level. This is your short term level. But I really like this tool just because it makes it easy to 
one look at everything, see your ranges, see where, you know, the meters are moving. It's a little bit easier to see than this one up over here. I like that it's got the gain on it that I can boost it and reduce that a little bit. You also have some extra tools down here. If you want a high pass or a low pass filter, you can turn those on if you want to. Um, and it's got just some other features here, but this is a really handy tool that I use from Waves all the time. I'll link both these things down below. If you want to jump over their website and check it out, you can take a look at it, but you don't need to use these. You can do it manually if you want. So if I just close these guys down here, you can do it manually by just applying a regular uh, limiter or maybe a soft clipper, which are both right inside of DaVinci Resolve. And you can just boost up that main bus one. But by measuring your loudness, which is the measure of all of your audio together and ensuring that it's close to that minus 14 luffs, which is different than DB level, don't get it confused. That's gonna ensure that your videos on YouTube are gonna be loud like some of the other creators that you might have heard. And it'll help you make sure that your videos aren't a little on the quiet side. So even if you turn the volume all the way up, you're like, it's just not that loud. Why is it not that loud? An important thing to note, because we are manually setting all of our audio levels, when you're in the deliver page and you're going to render out your video and you come to the audio tab, we have this audio normalization. You may think that you need to use this, but do not use this because you've already set your loudness levels manually. So if you were to normalize this and turn this on, you'll notice they do have a YouTube setting, but you don't want to use this because we already set it manually. We made sure it's exactly where we want it to be. So don't use this tool here. Make sure this is turned off when you go to render out your video. Now, if you want to double check what your videos are doing and whether you're getting close to that loudness level on YouTube, here's how you do that real quick. So here's one of my videos on my YouTube channel, and this will work on any video. It doesn't have to be your own. It could be anybody's video, but if you just right click on it and you come down to stats for nerds, it's gonna bring this little window up here and where you wanna check for the loudness and seeing if you're at or close to the allowable limit is right here, volume slash normalized. If you put your volume all the way up in your YouTube window, you want it to read 100 slash 100 and the content loudness should say either zero dB or anything minus, right? So minus 3.1 dB means I'm 3.1 dB below the maximum allowable loudness level. If you see this number is a plus, that means YouTube is squashing down your audio by whatever that amount is. And if I can find a video that has that, I'm gonna post an image of it right here just so you can see what that looks like. But as long as you see that minus number there or zero, then you should be good to go as far as your overall loudness is concerned for your YouTube video. So don't get your DB levels and your loudness levels confused. It's really two different things and you only wanna check your loudness at the very end of your audio editing process. I consider it part of the mastering process, right? Getting it all ready and just sweetened up for YouTube. So keep that in mind. It's two separate things. You have your DB level, setting your levels for individual tracks like dialogue and music and sound effects. And again, I've got videos on how to set all that stuff and where to set it. And then you've got loudness, which is something you do after all of your levels have been set. And this way you ensure you've got a good sound and video that's gonna be loud enough on YouTube for anybody to hear, whether you're on a phone, a TV, a computer, whatever it might be, you're gonna be good to go. So I know this concept can be a little confusing. If you're a little confused by it, you got questions, leave a comment down below. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. If you wanna learn audio editing beginning to end, I've got an audio course that you could check out if you're interested. It's called Audio Essentials for Video Editors in DaVinci Resolve. You can check that out if you want, if you're looking to learn A to Z in one spot on uh, how to work with your audio and stuff and make it sound awesome. Check that out. So with that said, guys, go get your audio sounding good for your YouTube videos or wherever you're gonna put them. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Peace.